Hi, Micropunter here, and today I want to talk about the 10 things that I wish I knew when I started microscopy as a hobby now about 21 years ago. And let's get started right away. Well, and the first thing I wish I knew is, is that bacteria are boring. They are probably one of the most boring specimens that you can put under the microscope. But bacteria are those things that most people want to watch when they start out microscopy as a hobby. I get so many emails or comments uh, and they're all asking me, can I see bacteria with, these, uh, with this microscope? And well, I have to say, well, most likely, yes. Um, if it's a re reasonably decent microscope, you can see bacteria, but uh, why, why do you want to? Um, honestly, there are a million times more interesting and easier to observe specimens around. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna show you now, uh, that's the best that you're ever gonna get. These bacteria are uh, observed in phase contrast. Uh, this means that uh, the microscope that I used is already a slightly better one and you can see that the bacteria dark on a bright background. That's uh, because uh, phase contrast microscopy changes transparent objects into uh, brightness. It's a little bit expensive, but this is as good as it's gonna get. And uh, many people simply want to see bacteria. I think also because they do not know that there are so many other interesting specimens to observe. Well, this leads us directly into the second uh, point that I want to make. There are many interesting specimens to look at that can be seen even in low magnification. You do not need uh, a high magnification of 1000 times and some people want to even go even higher 2,000 3,000 times magnification well honestly uh, microscopes they stop at around 1,000 times because we have reached the limit uh, of uh, resolution at that uh, resol um, at that magnification but honestly you don't even need that many um, pond life specimens can be easily observed uh, using a total magnification of 100 times or 200 times um, I myself uh, rarely even use uh, anything higher than that when I um, observe pond life 400 times magnification is then useful if you want to look into the individual cells but many things can be seen at low magnification and it is not necessary to always buy an expensive 100 times oil immersion objective which gives you a total magnification of 1000 times often the money is invested better in a microscope that allows you to take pictures for example I think uh, magnification yeah is not always the most important thing point number three and this is, is that the quality of the specimen is probably more important than the quality of the optics if you want to get good results also for photography. The optics these days uh, are generally already quite good. Uh, so even low cost uh, achromatic objectives uh, are quite good these days uh, for casual observation. And in many cases, they are also good enough if you want to take pictures uh, through the microscope. Now there are of course certain specialized optics, plan objectives and so on, which are optimized for photography. But I would say that uh, even reasonably low cost uh, objectives that come with a standard low cost microscope, they are pretty good already. But the thing is, is, is that if the specimen quality is not good enough then I would say that this uh, really reduces the image quality more than anything else so if you invest some time in specimen preparation if you make sure that the specimen is reasonably thin um, so that the, the objects do not float in and out of a focus and if you make sure that there is not enough uh, yeah, debris floating around sometimes in water samples you do not only have the little um, thing that you want to see the little algae uh, that you want to see but there's sometimes also some other stuff floating around um, which can actually yeah, distract from the main image that you want to show. Well, and if you make sure that the specimen is high, high quality, then also the picture that you take will look very good. And high performance objectives, plan objectives, apochromatic objectives, they're not only extremely expensive, uh, but uh, they sometimes improve the image in such a way that you might not even notice unless you're looking for it. So for example, in more expensive objectives, they uh, reduce chromatic aberration and this is uh, so-called purple or yellow fringing but if you don't know that you actually have to look for that well then you might not even notice that your image has this so in this sense I would say focus on the specimen and uh, you'll be most likely happy as a beginner with the standard objectives that uh, your microscope com comes with so the fourth point microscopy is not a difficult hobby uh, but it does require practice. 
And I see this especially when um, I teach microscopy to my students. Uh, often they have problems focusing, they have problems uh, also seeing the image. Uh, they have sometimes problems, sometimes they see a double image because the distance between the eyepieces is not the same because they did not know that you can adjust the eyepiece, the intrapupillary distance um, and uh, so many other things like this. So uh, microscopy does require practice and uh, this means that I would say that be patient at the beginning and uh, not only microscope use requires practice but also being able to actually making sense of the things that you actually see. Well this also requires a little bit of practice. So be patient and uh, keep on learning. Number five, uh, you need to know some basic biology if you want to make sense of the things that you see. So this kind of ties in a little bit with my previous point. Um, sometimes you see something quite interesting um, and you don't know what it is. And then if I look at it, then I have to say, well, hmm, it's actually nothing special. It's just a piece of dust. Um, so, uh, in, but in order to actually know what is important and what's not so important, especially when you use compound microscopes, which can give you a very abstract image, sometimes uh, you benefit a lot if you read up a little bit on the biology um, and uh, so that you can see, uh, understand better of what you're actually seeing and uh, also if you have children that uh, you want to yeah, introduce by uh, microscopy to um, it's easy to put things under the microscope but actually what does it mean okay and then the first question that they ask is are these bacteria no it's not it's just a piece of dust okay so but if you don't know what it is then it uh, can be a little bit confusing sometimes so buy yourself some literature and read up on the things and uh, you, I think that this might also greatly enhance uh, the interest of uh, um, of this hobby. Number six. Number six is the so-called 80-20 rule or the law of diminishing returns and uh, what it means is the following. I wish I knew that uh, already very low-cost microscopes can produce very good results but it's a specific requirement that to really drive up the price and I would say probably exponentially. Um, this means 80-20 rules means that is for 20% the price so you can probably see 80% of the things using a microscope. Um, um, and uh, if you have specific requirements, specific opti optics that you want, then the price of the microscope explodes very quickly. Um, but I would say that for beginners, uh, this uh, means that uh, if you you don't have to worry too much um, about uh, whether a microscope, a low-cost entry-level microscope, is good enough or not. And I would say in most cases it is. Um, but uh, the high-end microscopes, like for example this one here, was so expensive because I have a pretty good adapter here. Um, that would be one reason. And this. Um, also really drove up the price of, for your information just the adapter um, costs more than a low-cost microscope itself okay so and uh, this uh, basically means that uh, you are also quite uh, well off uh, with a microscope uh, which does not cost so much at the beginning and uh, you have to be a little bit careful of investing the money there where you actually need it. So the seventh uh, point that I wish I knew when I started off microscopy over 20 years, 21 years ago, and this is, is that stereo microscopes are totally underrated. What do I mean? Most people think of microscopes when they uh, hear the word microscopes of compound microscopes like this one here. You see that this one here has uh, objectives that you can rotate um, in and out. And uh, however, there's also a second type of microscopes, the so-called the stereo microscopes. I've got one here. I'm gonna move it in. That's the one, okay? I've got to lift it and you can see Okay, it looks quite different. Okay, and I can put the object, the specimen, directly on the stage. So the stereo microscopes are for opaque objects. So these are non-transparent objects, and these objects are quite large. And I think that stereo microscopes really can, yeah, allow you to expand your horizons. But most people, or many people, don't even consider them at the beginning. Why? Because the magnification is much lower, and uh, many uh, beginners are focused very much on magnification. And they, and they say, always, "Wow, I can. This one can go up to a six hundred times a thousand times it's much better while the other one can only go up a maximum 45 times huh? right um, so the magnification however is only a very is only one aspect that's important and I think that stereo microscopes can really um, yeah also be a very good uh, uh, microscope uh, to observe your environment but it depends a little bit what you want to see I would say get probably probably get both number eight 
most microscopes are made in China anyway so whether a microscope is made in China or not is not a quality criterion of course the term China microscope has established itself uh, over the last couple of years um, and yes there are some Chinese uh, manufacturers where the microscope quality is extremely low no question but um, if the microscopes are um, made for export and if they are rebranded then by a company then you can assume that the quality is going to be quite okay uh, because the company then is uh, takes care that the quality the, that the microscope uh, fulfills minimum um, uh, yeah, quality quality standards that is um, it's like this that many microscopes that are imported uh, into Europe into the United States and so on um, into other countries they are there are a handful of Chinese manufacturers and they manufacture a handful of microscopes and they are exported and then the different companies simply put on their own label so they're all the same microscope anyway really it's uh, it's that simple um, and even very expensive brand microscope manufacturers um, sometimes yeah they even they produce microscopes in china because uh, the labor costs are simply simply much lower but they will actually make sure that the quality is sufficiently high in summary where a microscope is made is i would say pretty much irrelevant so point nine it's probably better to spend uh, a little bit of money uh, at the beginning uh, and to invest some money in a low-cost microscope at the beginning and then once you gained a little bit of experience to spend more money later on and I would say maybe I wouldn't say this was a mistake but that's how what I have not done okay and maybe this was not such a good idea this microscope here that I have my Olympus CH40 cost at that time uh, when I bought it uh, 21 years ago well several thousand uh, euros if you were not to translate this now into convert it now into current currency and honestly um, this is really expensive um, now Nowadays you can, can get uh, microscopes for several hundred euros that can do pretty much the same thing. Um, so I would probably, if I were to start up microscopy and if I want to really take it serious and I want to have a really good microscope, then I would say still buy yourself a low cost entry microscope first until you've kind of yeah uh, learned the first steps in microscopy and then you'll actually know much better which type of microscopes you want to uh, buy later on and into which direction you want to go. And then you can actually decide later on um, if you want to buy yourself specialized expensive objectives for photography or not all these things you can yeah push on um, up for later because uh, you simply have more experience uh, than at the beginning yeah having tried the first steps with a low-cost microscope so that is simply also one of the advices so and now what is the tenth point I wish that I knew that microscopy is such a cool hobby then I would have probably started it much earlier I have to be very honest with you that uh, at the beginning I did not know even though I studied biology at university I did not know there are so many things that you can observe uh, one of the reasons was probably also because at that time over 20 years ago there was not so much literature available and the internet also was not around yet um, so this means that I was a little bit limited concerning information and uh, this uh, was one of the reasons why that time yeah I just looked at the standard objects that put onion cells under the microscope and that's pretty much it um, but nowadays with so much more experience that I have and with so much more information available um, I'm realizing now how many how wide the things are that you can actually observe and in order to broaden the specimens that I can observe even more I bought myself a stereo microscope but that's another thing so I have I'm doubling or tripling even the objects now that I can observe but microscopy really is is a very good hobby um, also for places where the weather is not always nice uh, like here for example in Europe uh, in Central Europe uh, it's often very foggy and cloudy and therefore I cannot do amateur astronomy which I also uh, used to do many years ago and that's why I've picked up microscopy as a hobby one of the few science um, hobbies uh, that I know of and uh, yeah please uh, do subscribe to the channel and yes I also have a second channel where I'm putting things under the microscope also have a visit there and also visit the microscopy shop that I have. I wish you all the best, happy micro hunting and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.